I'm Kay Adams. Yesterday, parades, fly paths and fluttering flags honoured the bravery of Britain's armed forces. 308 of them have now lost their lives in Afghanistan, 19 this month alone. Our first big question, is it time to get out of Afghanistan? This defence correspondent says we're fighting a dirty guerrilla war with bad allies and we need to find a way to get out. A UN report this week says global drug trafficking threatens the peace, development and governance of the entire planet. Maybe it's time to change tack and cut out the criminals. Our next big question, should we legalise and tax drugs? This former chief constable says controlling and regulating the supply could save Britain £14 billion a year. And there's a new poster campaign in London designed to help us understand the teachings of Muhammad better. Our last big question, does Islam need better PR? We're at the King Edward VI Handsworth School here in Birmingham with a lively Birmingham audience and an equally lively panel. We have a local boy and poet, Benjamin Zephaniah, from the New Statesman, journalist Mehdi Hassan, and the novelist and broadcaster, Anne Atkins. <laughs> Now, this month has seen the highest number of deaths of NATO forces in Afghanistan since the start of the war nine years ago, 88 in all. This week, David Cameron warned that the troops are in for a difficult summer. Is it time to get out of Afghanistan? Well, Robert Fox, you're a defence correspondent. You've spent a lot of time in Afghanistan. We've been there nine years. We've spent somewhere around £10 billion. As we've heard this morning, 308 British lives lost. Should we at least stay and do what J David Cameron says, get the job done? We've got to have a proper plan for getting out. But I think that we've learned from the week's events, not only the dead and the many, many more injured, but also the story of General Stanley McChrystal, why he went. Yes, he made a bit of a boo-boo being rather too frank with people like me, but that's not really the point, which is what the media concentrated on. What they should have concentrated on is quite clearly he was beginning to state to the correspondent he spoke to that the plan wasn't working. And a friend of mine who's worked for McChrystal and knows him very well said the problem was he's been brilliant in other theatres where he's been commanding special operations. They sent a military man to resolve primarily a political problem. And we're still being told about this war in military terms. So you don't think there's a military solution to this? No, and it's got to be a solution that comes from inside. And that's the thing that really is failing. And it's this thing about rotten allies. It's not that the Americans are, are rotten allies, but actually the kind of thing that we're trying to prop up, not only the Karzai regime, but what that regime stands for. It was brought in from outside at the end of 2001. And colleagues like David Loyne of the BBC have written wonderful books explaining why that just doesn't work. Now, the thing that worries me most about it, and I think it should come into our debate, is we're concentrating on this war. You can t contain it, it ebbs, it flows, and it is very bloody, and it's bringing a lot of distress. But we are in danger of losing the really strategic war next, do next door because we can't get engaged in it, namely the war in Pakistan, which I would say is strategically very dangerous. Now, related to another point that we're going to say, uh, discuss in this debate, which I think is very, very important, the one thing I would say, and anybody in this room can challenge me we haven't got on top of is the narco economy in Afghanistan because it has grown hugely in the time that we've well, been Well, we, we've got many many points in there and in terms of the drugs war we're going to talk about mm. that later on in our next debate but addressing ourselves to whether or not we should be coming out Robin Matthews uh, formerly served in Afghanistan you're there in 2008 as a lieutenant colonel would you agree that we need to be getting ourselves out I think the first point I make in reply to what Robert has just said is all soldiers on the ground, all back in white, <coughs> acknowledge that there is no exclusively military solution to the problem. But what the military do is provide the space for things like economic reconstruction and development and the political process and government to flourish. But coming back to your point, do I think we should withdraw from Afghanistan? Absolutely no. And I disagree with Robert. I think there is a plan, and I think the plan is working. General Nick Parker, who is currently commanding all forces in Af Afghanistan in that interregnum between Stanley McChrystal and Petraeus, who is due in theatre soon, and who, incidentally, uh, his son fought in Afghanistan and, two, two, and lost two legs uh, to a mine strike. He said the plan is working. And I think of all the people we should listen to, the soldiers on the ground are the ones that, that we should... But what is the end game, to use the common parlance? I mean, you say the plan is working, but where are we going? Well, I think the great thing that Stanley McChrystal did was to look 
uh, refresh the strategy and look at it very intelligently. And he took the focus away from simply destroying Taliban and actually said, what we need to do now is protect the people. And before the program, Benjamin, Benjamin Zeff and I was very eloquently talking about the need to support the underdog. Well, the underdog in this contest is the Afghan people. They ask for our, our support, we, they need our support, and we should continue to give, give them their support because it's the Afghan people, not British or American soldiers or Estonian soldiers, it's the Afghan people yeah. that will determine success in that country. Well, we certainly we read in the paper suggestions that, you know, if we were to pull out now or now-ish, Afghanistan would descend into civil war. I mean, Salma Yaqub uh, from the Respect Party, you surely wouldn't want to see that. Well, we have to remember the whole country is in a mess now <coughs> because of the war. You mentioned the Afghan people. 35,000 Afghan civilians have been killed since the beginning of this war. That's a huge figure. We're shocked at 308 British soldiers. And just last night in Birmingham, we saw the death of another soldier. That's not acceptable. And when you look at what the Afghan suffering is, 7 million Afghans have been made refugees. How is that a success or doing the Afghan people a favour by any stretch of the imagination? So no, the way to end the suffering of the Afghan people actually is to end the war. That's what they're asking for. Even the women uh, there are saying actually their situation has become worse since the beginning of this war not better. I'm going to come back to you, uh, um, Robin, on that one. You know, you're saying there is a plan, successes have been gained. I mean, Salma utterly disagrees with you on that. Well, I think, I think the point she makes about casualties and the dislocation of the Afghan people is absolutely right. No one wants to see that. But I think one of the things that General McChrystal has done by focusing his entire strategy on protecting the people is to reduce the number of civilian casualties. And since he took command, he and since they working. took command, McChrystal they have been himself. reduced. Just go on, Tom. McChrystal himself assessed the situation. It was his plan, yes, and he himself has said it's not working. The fact but, but is, the we've point got is more is casualties, like come, more no, soldiers like dying, and actually the whole thing was based on clear and hold. They're not able to clear. Marjorie, a town of 35,000 uh, people, couldn't be um, could cleared off the uh, Taliban influence by 15,000 soldiers. That's two uh, soldiers, two civilians for every one soldier. And the, the idea you're going to hold Kandahar, which is ten times that size, is absolutely a fantasy. So, I mean, a fantasy, well, Doctor? Can I just say, on each of the points, first of all, McChrystal, his plan, it isn't working. I think you need to see the subtext beneath what McChrystal was saying. He wasn't saying his plan wasn't working. What he is saying to Osama bin, uh, not Osama bin Laden, Barack Obama, uh, Freudian slip there, was effectively that actually his plan will only work under certain circumstances. Barack Obama is working to an electoral timetable, which means effectively you can have a surge of 30,000 troops in Afghanistan until summer of next year, and then we must draw down so we can demonstrate to the American people that we have enjoyed success. What McChrystal was trying to tell him through a variety of different means was that if you do that, the plan will fail. What you need to do is to stay the long course. And at the heart of that is the, the need to protect the population. So this population centric strategy that he's articulated is, I think, the best option of a range of bad options available to you. With regards to Pakistan, yes, we should be focusing on Pakistan, but in truth, if you allow the implosion of Afghanistan by pulling out now, and I would compare Afghanistan to a simmering pot at the moment, with NATO forces simply holding that that it's pot. the war in Afghanistan that's destabilising well, Pakistan. We can, 2, 000, can I just answer the question? 2,000 Pakistani okay. soldiers have been killed yes, I understand in that. The, in, because they're, they're allies of America. Can I give you the alternative Hundreds scenario? Hundreds of thousands okay, of Pakistanis Warren, have also been attacked. Right. Here is uh, the counterpoint uh, uh, to that. Be, be hang on, you, hang on. Many people fear, and one of them is actually the EU special envoy to Afghanistan, who commented in the papers today that if NATO pulls out and the fear that NATO will pull out, is in itself precipitating a possible civil war. And I would draw your attention back to 1989, when the Americans pulled the plug and so did the Russians. What happened to Afghanistan? It sank into the most bestial civil war that we can actually remember within well, the history of that country. Now, let's deal with the reality of Afghanistan today. If you actually pull out, so Afghanistan potentially sinks into civil war, the Afghan Taliban come to power, what are they going to do? They're going to start promoting and supporting the Pakistan Taliban, which in itself will destabilise the Pakistani state, which brings about regional destabilisation. So That's I don't think... That's already, and your it's strategy a of is making it worse. Warren, well, well, one, of the, uh, one of the other reasons for going to Afghanistan was to protect us, wasn't it? To national security, so that we would be um, protected from terrorism. 